How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be talking you through whether it's better to buy a second hand old and super cheap first car or an expensive brand new first car. So I actually asked this question as a topic of the week in one of my previous videos and I got some mixed feedback. Most of you I think said you'd prefer a cheaper older car as your first car and then to upgrade to something nicer in the longer term and that does make some sense to me. But some of you said that you would never be seen dead in an old banger and that you'd much rather prefer to buy a brand new car. I've done a bit of research to kind of see what the running costs and all that kind of stuff are of owning an older car versus owning a newer car are. And I'm gonna basically tell you in this video whether for your first car you should go for an old car or a new car. As always, remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So before we can properly begin, let's get my personal bias out of the way. I had a super cheap first car, a Skoda Fabia Estate, it was £400 and it served me brilliantly in the time that I had it, but I'll probably talk about it more throughout this video. My second car is my VW Polo, again 2002 and it served me super well. So between those two cars, I spent approximately £800 on cars. So if there's some bias coming through towards older cars, it's probably because I've had two older cars as two of my cars so far. In fact, my MX-5 that I've just bought is from 1997, 98. So again, maybe I'm biased towards old cars, but I'm trying my best to be a little bit more objective when it comes to this video. Anyway, so what I did is I took four cars that are common first cars that have been around since sort of the early 2000s and still exist today, or at least some kind of iteration of them do. That's the VW Polo, the Ford Fiesta, the Vauxhall Corsa, and the VW Lupo, or today the VW Up. I also then took two slightly more luxurious cars, one being the Mazda MX-5, since I've just got one, and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. And I wanted to see how all of those different cars differed from their sort of early early 2000s models to today's models in terms of how much it would cost you to run, how safe they are, all that kind of stuff. So on screen now you should be able to see the price differences between each of those cars that I've mentioned. Orange signifies the new cars and blue signifies the old cars. So when it comes to price, obviously the whole premise of this video is the fact that the old cars are very cheap. Clearly the original outlay of money when buying an old car is much, much better. So one argument I see against older cars quite often is the fact that they're less safe than newer cars. I looked at the Euro NCAP ratings to kind of verify this, and you can see on screen here that they're pretty much all between four and five, with some of the newer cars being fours and some of the older cars being fives and vice versa. But that doesn't really tell us very much, and in particular, one thing that's quite important is the fact that the NCAP changed in the 2000s so that they don't really compare very well. Instead, I decided to look at adult safety. And so on the screen right now, you should be able to see the adult safety within one of these cars. Keep in mind that the older cars are on a 1 to 5 rating here whilst the newer cars are on a 1 to 100 rating here. So where it's a 4 I've given 80% where it's a 5 I've given 100% to kind of keep them in line with where the newer cars are. So as an overall yes you can see that the older version of the car is generally less safe as an overall for an adult occupant than a newer car. But I mean, you'd expect that anyway, right? Safety laws generally get more stringent as time goes on. And there are plenty of other cars today that are actually less safe for adult occupants that you could buy brand new. For example, this whole list right here. I was then interested in fuel economy, and here you can see a similar graph showing the differences between fuel economy. Again, in most cases, the fuel economy is better for the newer car than the older car, mostly because tech's gotten better. So for example, the old Fiesta does 45 miles per gallon versus the new one doing 49. The new one has the EcoBoost engine, which the old one didn't. And emission laws have gotten more stringent over time as well, which leads me on nicely to how they affect the environment. Maybe you care a lot about the environment and you don't want a car that just absolutely pollutes the planet. And yes, again, here you can see a graph of the different grams per kilometer of CO2 produced by each of these cars. Again, the newer car is always going to be better for the environment than the older one. They're just simply made to better environmental standards. But let's think about this from a monetary perspective for a second because generally I feel like that's one thing that people are quite interested in when it comes to owning these cars. When it comes to road tax, you can see here that generally it's all very similar across the board, whether you're buying an older car or a newer car. It tends to be around about £25 difference tops. In many cases, it's £0 difference. The only major differences that I could see were with the more luxury cars where it gets a little bit more expensive. And much more interestingly, particularly for you younger drivers there, the insurance. 
insurance. Now, if you've seen one of my previous videos on how to get cheap insurance, I used that same basic structure for my quotes on this one. And so I got some quite cheap quotes for the area that I was insuring in. It's a middle of the park kind of area, not particularly expensive or not particularly cheap. But here you can see the differences between those cars. In many cases, the difference is absolutely minor between an old car and a new car. So you spent 500 pounds on a 2004 Fiesta, and then you spent 1,168 pounds on insuring it. First is spending almost 16,000 pounds on a brand new Fiesta, and then spending pretty much the exact same amount of money annually on insurance. What's slightly more interesting, however, is the luxury cars in this. So if you wanted to get a 2002 MX-5 and drive it around, you're looking at 3,689 pounds a year for insurance versus the 2019 MX-5 where you're looking at £1,361. That's incredibly reasonable for a 2019 MX-5. But even then, if you think about this just from a monetary perspective, you've spent almost £20,000 on that brand new MX-5 versus £1,000 on that 2002 MX-5. So even though it's a big expense year on year, that price will go down as your no claims bonus gets up and ultimately, yes, it will feel more expensive year on year but you also haven't put out the outlay of 20 grand so yes these are all very interesting facts but they don't really tell us whether it's better to go for an older car or a newer car completely because what we've established is that basically you spend a lot more money to have a more environmentally friendly car that is cheaper to insure but only just pays a similar amount of road tax has slightly better fuel economy and it's just a little bit safer for the occupant in the case of a crash and all that for just 30 times as much money as the cheap version but there could be some benefit to you buying that new car in terms of your actual money. So if you buy it personally, so if you're 17 years old and you have some form of income that allows you to be able to buy that car in your own name, you could get your credit rating higher by buying it on finance. Now credit rating doesn't seem like such a big deal when you're 17, but when you're in your 20s and you're looking to buy a house, credit rating suddenly becomes very important. So maybe you're putting out 200 pounds, 300 pounds or whatever it is per month on your finance deal. Yes, that's a lot of money to be paying month on month. It's about the same that you could pay for a polo, but you're also building up that credit rating so that you can get better car loans in future and better mortgages and better other loans basically. But that's not a benefit if you don't buy it in your own name. So if your parents buy it, then their credit rating goes up and yours just sits there doing nothing. But at the same time, your parents just bought you a car. So on balance, you're still kind of winning. But at the same time, cash flow could also be an issue. Let's say you want to buy the VW up, it costs you 10,500 pounds and you've got the money in hand. So you decide that's it, I'm going to buy it. You buy that VW up, you've, your 10,500 pounds is gone simply gone. If you bought the Lupo instead, you spent 500 pounds and you've got 10,000 pounds left in the bank, collecting interest and generally doing its work as money and allowing you to do other things. Helping you to pay for your insurance and your road tax and all that other good stuff. Now that's obviously dependent on the situation because some people will have plenty of money to splash out on a car, some people will have a lot less money to splash out on a car. Either way, whether you're rich or poor, if you buy a brand new car, when it leaves the showroom, it dips in value significantly. So let's say you go into your local VW store and you buy yourself a nice brand new take up. It costs you 10,500 pounds, you don't spec it at all and you drive it straight out of the showroom. Suddenly, it's worth 9,500 pounds. And I'm not kidding, it's literally there on screen for you. That's 9,500 pounds for a 25 miles delivery mileage car. Let's say you then do 500 miles on that car. So you've driven it around a little bit, you've done a few journeys here and there. Suddenly, it's 8,500 pounds. You're 2K down at this point. What is going on? You've done 2,500 miles. Maybe you've done that in about half a year because you're a new driver. So you're not driving too, too many miles per year, but you're driving enough miles suddenly it's worth about seven and a half grand. So within a year, the car has gone from 10,500 pounds to seven and a half thousand pounds like that. And you've done barely anything to the car. It hasn't even had its first service at this point. It's just lost three grand just like that. That's the same with you buy it in cash or on finance as well. That three grand is now gone. Or instead you go to your local eBay, you buy yourself a nice 500 pound Lupo, you drive it around for that same amount of time, I bet you you could sell that same car for the same amount of money to some other dude who wants a nice cheap first car. It's just the way it works. The Lupo has depreciated, the up will depreciate simple and even if you can't sell the car for the same amount that you bought it for for whatever reason you bought it for 500 pounds you sell it for 300 or 200 pounds you've lost 300 quid the max you can lose on that car is 500 pounds the max you can lose on your vw up 
The 2014 up was going for like nine grand when it was brand new. You can now get them for about two and a half grand. I feel sorry for anyone who bought one of those brand new and is now selling them because they have basically lost seven grand in the space of five years. So yes, depreciation is probably one of the biggest points against buying a new car as your first car. But there are plenty of reasons why you should buy a new car instead. One of them is certainly around reliability, warranties, all that kind of stuff. So when it comes to reliability, when you buy an older car, yes, you're buying a car that has been used and therefore might not have been looked after in the way that you've wanted it to. You don't really know what the previous owners have done to it. In many cases, when you buy particularly cheap cars, you don't get a service history with them. You're just getting a generally old and cheap car. It's a take what you can get kind of situation. I see it on my videos all the time. People always talk about the reliability of cars that are second hand. And I don't know whether they're talking from experience or if they're talking just from the general sentiment towards second hand cars, but they have a bad rap for bad reliability. Oftentimes you can't get a warranty with a second hand car as well. You can in some cases, some cars are actually still within warranty that you can buy. But if you're looking at the kind of cars I'm looking at in this video, so like the 400 pound, 500 pound kind of region, yeah, you're not going to get a warranty unless you buy from a really nice local garage that gives you one for a certain amount of time. But with that being said, with my Skoda, I had it for three years. Remember, I bought that car for £400. I spent about £100 on repairs. That was two coil pack replacements, maybe three, I can't remember, and an exhaust issue. Other than that, the car was absolutely fine. Super reliable, a bit mental at times, and it dropped a lot of oil out of it. But as an overall it was quite cheap to look after. On top of that, I must spend about 100 to 200 pounds on maintenance over those three years. And that was just because I wanted to put the money into the car. It was less because it had to be put in. So about 300 pounds over the three years, so about 100 pounds a year, really not that bad. Similarly with my Polo, I've had it for about two years now. I had one coil pack go, the exhaust has rotted through at one point, And other than that, the car has been absolutely fine. So it's cost me around about 50 pounds in terms of repairs in two years. And I've spent maybe a hundred pounds on maintaining it. Spent plenty more on modding the car, but that's a different question. And the best part about buying an older car versus a newer car when it comes to that point is the fact that onboard diagnostics have generally been released for older cars and they generally don't get released for a few years on a new car. What I mean by that is that when you go to your local independent garage, you, they can generally work on any of your cars that are pre sort of, I don't know, 2013. It might, it might be slightly less than that. Someone will correct me in the comments, I'm sure. My, I should know, my dad's literally a car mechanic. So yeah, you take your Polo in to an independent manufacturer, they fix the car up for you and they send you on your way. If you buy a brand new car, you can't do that. The independent mechanic can't actually work out what's wrong with your car electrically. And in many cases, they can't actually program the parts into the car that are required. So rather than it just being the case of you take out a part and you put in a new part to replace it, sometimes you have to program that part into the car. And manufacturers withhold the information that allows you to program that into the car, killing the independent mechanic market and ensuring that they hold a monopoly over the repairs on their own cars. Generally, that's not the case with older cars. Older cars, you're super chilled. New cars, maybe not. You might have to pay manufacturer prices for repairs if you haven't got a warranty. One more point I wanna talk about before I get onto just kind of more opinionated stuff is the fact that there is an image to having an older car and an image to having a newer car that is attached to you just by society. So you buy a nice new car as your first car, it's a bit of a flex. You can take it to school and show it and be like, oh, well, check out my brand new car. And all your mates will be like, oh, that's sick. You've got a nice new car. And yeah, you just look way more flex than the rest of your mates. At the same time, there's also an image and almost a rite of passage of having an older car as your first car. Watch Top Gear and have a look at the Star and R reasonably priced car. The vast majority of the celebs seem to have driven pretty much rubbishy, old, cheap first cars as their first cars. It's just something that in Britain we all seem to do. Maybe it's different in other car cultures. Do you let me know if you're from another country and everyone buys newer cars as their first cars? But just because something's a rite of passage doesn't mean you need to follow it. If you can afford a newer car, then why not go for it? I guess. There is one point around older cars that I am partial to though, and that is the character. I've driven quite a few brand new cars, and though they are super comfortable, super nice, they drive really, really well. You feel like you're floating pretty much in a brand new car. They haven't got the character of an older car. And that's just my opinion. Plenty of people will probably disagree with me, but I feel like when you have an older car that has got tons of scratches on it, it's probably broken in some places that you're not aware of. It drives in a certain way that you're used to and it suits your kind of driving and all that kind of stuff. It has a little bit more character to it, if only because it has more history and more of a story to tell. I'm not saying that brand new cars can't have character. 
I feel like character is something that is developed in a car over time. So when you get a car brand new, it doesn't have the character. And then when you get to the stage 10 years later, suddenly that car has a bit more of a story to it. But that's super subjective, so feel free to ignore that as well. One thing that's not subjective is the fact that if you buy a brand new car, you'll get the new car smell, which you just won't get if you buy an old car. And on that point, when you're buying a secondhand car, sometimes you might buy it off of an old person who does have a dog and they keep that dog in the car seemingly 24 seven. So your whole car smells of wet dog all the time. Time when you first buy it that was the case of my Skoda or you might buy your car off of a smoker and then your car just smells of smoke and you need to get the whole car completely aired out for seemingly forever to get rid of even half of that smell of smoke one of two final points I want to discuss with practicality generally newer cars are slightly bigger than older cars I don't really know why it must be to do regulation or whatever but if you bought a 2002 VW Polo you're looking at getting sort of 270 liters of luggage space throughout the car versus a brand new Polo, which has about 351 liters of space. And that's kind of consistent throughout all of the cars from old to new. So that means, yes, you'll be able to take slightly more stuff if you buy a newer car versus an older one. But at the same time, it means that with the older one, you'll be able to park in more parallel parking spaces than with the newer one. With the Polo, for example, the new one is 20 centimeters longer than one from 2002 and four centimeters wider. And that does make a difference. And the final main point I want to discuss some modifications. If you're the kind of person who's going to modify their car in the longer term, probably not in your first year because many people find that it completely demolishes their insurance. If you get an older car, it generally has more choice when it comes to what you want to mod the car with just because it's been around for longer. So more companies have been able to produce more cheap things to put on your car. For example, with my Polo, loads of stuff you can put on the car. With my MX-5, even more stuff you can put on the car. With newer cars, there's just been less time for people to make nice things to go on them. At the same time, that could be a bad thing because with newer cars, it tends to be a little bit easier to tastefully mod your car and make it look kind of pretty and nice and clean and give you a really good look. Whereas you can fall into the trap of ricing your older car pretty easily because there's so much cheap knockoff random stuff that you can throw onto the car and it doesn't actually look that good but you decide to buy it anyway because it was 20 quid rather than 200 quid, all that kind of stuff. So I've gone through a lot of stuff there and I've definitely been biased towards older cars just because it's the way that I went. But I wanted to give you a bit of just my personal opinion straight up on what I think you should do when it comes to buying your first car. I think if a new car is a definite option for you, whether you can afford the finance or buying the car outright for whatever reason, and you aren't ridiculously into cars or don't have access to someone who knows loads about cars, all that kind of stuff, then maybe it might be better for you to go for a newer car as your first car. Or even if you have all of those things, but there's a particular new car that you really have your eye on and you can afford the insurance and all that kind of stuff, go for it. Ultimately, the more people that buy those cars, the more of them depreciate in value, the more other people can buy them in the future. It's good stuff. But no, more seriously, I do actually think that buying a new car as your first car is pretty cool. At the same time, irrespective of your ability to buy the more expensive car, it might be a good idea to go for the cheaper one just for your first year or two on the roads. Let's say I've bought a 15,000 pound car as my first car. I'm driving it around. I'm having a bit of fun. I'm learning the roads, all that kind of stuff. I crash it. That's 15 grand's worth of car that I've just crashed. Do that with a 400 pound car it's a lot less serious. Or even if I don't crash it, let's just say I scrape it. Let's say I scrape the side of it. When I scraped my Skoda a couple of times in the first year of driving it, who cared? It had a million scrapes on it already. It was just another one in the pile. You scrape your brand new Vauxhall Corsa or whatever it is by going through a width restriction slightly too quickly and getting it wrong, yeah, that's, that's never fun. And it will stick out like a sore thumb when you look at that paint job, all stunning in red, and then that nice big, gray crease straight through it. You don't want that. Someone in the future who buys your car secondhand with loads and loads and loads of scrapes on it will think, oh great, look at this car, it's got so much character. But you don't want that on your new car. Or at least I'd assume you don't want that on your new car. Always good to learn in something that's cheaper, more cheerful, that you can get away with driving as your first car, and then move on to something that's more expensive when you've had a bit of time learning the roads and learning how to, I don't know, be a useful driver, basically. I know people make the argument of you should get an older car to learn how to do mechanics and that kind of stuff more, but most people don't even bother doing that stuff anyway. So unless you're really into working on cars, that's not really an argument. If you want to work on cars though, 
get an older one, you can work on it a lot more. Financial situation, as well as having a dad who's a car mechanic and all that kind of stuff, has meant that I've gone down the route of buying older cars as my first few cars. At some point in my life, I will try and buy myself a nice new car. But the key thing is I've had quite a few years on the roads to learn my craft and learn how to be slightly useful on the roads. And hopefully I don't get some dench scraping my brand new car whenever it comes to buying it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've already had a first car, was it a cheap old one or was it a nice new one? Or alternatively, if you haven't bought a first car yet, what are you gonna go for? A nice new car or a dead old one? As always, massive thank you to my patrons who will be in one of the corners of the screen right now. Really appreciate the support. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Yes.